uh, central and constant heating rate. Sometimes people do it for fundamental understanding of the sintering process. Lower, hint lower he heating rate quite often leads to greater densification at the same temperature. Here we are showing a series of plot. We are plotting relative density versus sintering temperature, isothermal temperature. For zinc oxide, the powder we start from 0.1 micron zinc oxide powder and the green density roughly 50%, which means we are roughly starting from 50% dense. And then we are doing isothermal sintering with different heating uprate and also with different uh, so-called isothermal temperature. And what we see here is that if we look at the same isothermal temperature, same isothermal temperature, which means we look vertically up, Okay, from this circle with a dot, it's this 0.5. This solid is 2. Square is 10. Solid square, 15. So you see that as you go to higher and higher heating rate, the at the same isothermal temperature, you are density, you are uh, your density goes lower. Sorry, it's not isothermal, it's constant heating. When you reach to this temperature, that makes sense, right? You are heating slower, which means when you reach here, you already put more heat into the system. When you heat too fast, when it reaches this temperature, it has not accumulated a lot of heat in the system. So it, it is lower density. Sorry, it's not isothermal, it's constant heating rate, which means you just ramp it up, okay? And eventually, if you reach high enough temperature, they would be more or less close. Make sense? When you reach enough temperature, okay? And then a related plot is this 1 over rho times d rho density over dt. So called by doing mathematical manipulation of this one, 1 over density times the slope of this. d rho over dt would be, d rho over dt would be the slope here, right? And then 1 over rho is normalized by the local density by the local density that you got, and then take log. And people find, okay, they would get a so-called master curve versus relative density, which means no matter what heating rate we are using, this normalized kind of density densification rate is highest when the relative density is in this range. Initially, the densification rate is slow, lower. Towards the end, the densification rate is also lower with respect to, but in between, it's more or less constant from roughly 0.55 to roughly 0.85. You see, it's kind of pretty, follows the same line. And it does not matter whether your heating rate is slow or fast. Make sense? We can do this for a different heating rate. But when we do this normalization, we find after normalization, the so-called densification, not exact rate because it's kind of a slope normalized by local density and then take not take log follows the same trend and it doesn't matter what you are seeing so essentially what it means is as long as your 
relative density is between here and here, you would have a relatively high value of this guy. Not exactly rate, because rate quite often we mean by time. This is not exactly by time, it's by temperature. Make sense? Okay, so let's continue. Temperature derivative, temperature derivative, d rho over dt of densification strain independent of heating rate and the maximum in relative density in this range so called temperature derivative of densification strain it's kind of like uh, this thing okay let's continue uh, at the same temperature the volume strain rate increase with increasing heating rate here we are talking about which the derivative is with respect to dt for that t small t for time inverse of minutes in terms of inverse of minute and when we plot that with so-called volume strain rate with respect to time and then we do find the higher the heating rate the higher the densification kind of strain rate with respect to time would be higher that kind of makes sense the higher you heat the higher when the rate is normalized with respect to time make sense and there's also a kind of a highest value highest value is somewhere in between when you reach doing this so-called constant heating rate symmetry the peak is not here we are not reaching the highest rate with respect to time towards the end it's still somewhere in between intermediate temperature when the extent of densification is intermediate from 55 relative density all the way to around 85 relative density okay but what people find is this so-called a faster heating rate it gives us shorter time for constant uh, rate centering but also enables final microstructure better microstructure here we are showing the SEM image for the centered material after probably thermal etching to show two different heating rate we are doing not isothermal centering but a constant rate centering and clearly you see the faster the the heating rate actually faster heating rate also means the shorter my overall centering time schedule i would have a much smaller grain and quite often for ceramics especially for mechanical application you want smaller grains as long as the density relative density are the same this one would give you better mechanical property compared with the lower one with larger grains for ceramics okay gives you better harness and also better toughness than this one that's why quite often people try to use higher heating rate but on the other hand you are limited by your furnace your heating capability your sample size at the same time you are also concerned with the most stress when you even if your furnace can handle it when you heat up to too fast the thermal stress may cause cracking make sense so it's still a compromise it's not like the higher the better because you are limited by some other factors okay but generally you want a faster heating rate which will give you finer microstructure which means better mechanical properties but for electrical and other properties it's another different story for electrical property quite often if the green are too fine you have depends your higher resistance may not be what you want okay